Utopianism is the belief in the creation of an ideal community through different controls, policies, and beliefs. In general, utopian beliefs were prompted by the desire for change in society, not because any particular aspect of society was too bad, but because people who started utopian communities believed they could create the ideal society by reforming education, communal labor, slavery, and other aspects of society. The increased attention placed on reforms and political activism in the 1830s prompted groups of people to escape into utopian communities. Ah, I'm so happy! Everything's perfect! It's a utopia! Ah! <laughs> One example of utopian societies created in the early 19th century was Brooks Farm in West Roxbury, Massachusetts. It was founded by George Ripley along with some of his acquaintances in 1841. With the onset of the Industrial Revolution, Ripley set out to make an agricultural community that was built off of human passion for their occupation, not the labor that would produce the most in the least amount of time. He believed that this system could create social harmony. Brooks Farm was meant to be a religious city that was free of sin and one that established equality, or a heaven on earth. It aimed to balance labor with education to make the citizens into workers that were also intellectuals. The community promoted the abolishment of slavery and class systems, and it advocated equal educational and economic opportunities for all. People on the farm chose the occupation that most interested them, and they were all equally paid. However, the farm was ultimately unsuccessful because of its inability to produce income. The soil on the farm was sandy, and the farmers were not skilled. In fact, most of the citizens that were on the farm did not like to focus on finances or even making money. This was a stance that ultimately caused the farm to go bankrupt in 1847. It has become a model utopian community and is well known in American history for its panel of famous inhabitants including Ralph Waldo Emerson. People of the Brooks Farm community were extremely unskilled at farming. Oh, I'm so good at cutting the grass. It's not working. Grow, Mr. Apple. Grow big and strong. Make me proud, Mr. Apple. Drink it. Drink it! Now! It grew! Look! It even says fresh on its label! Ever since I was a young boy, I wanted to be a farmer. You get paid two dollars an hour. Ever since I was a young child, I wanted to be a nuclear physicist. You get paid two dollars an hour, just like that poor uneducated farmer over there. Warning. This clip contains copious amounts of Jack Bennett. Women with heart conditions are advised not to look directly at Jack Bennett. This also applies to women without heart conditions. He's very pretty. See? See how pretty he is? He's very pretty. The Oneida community, founded in 1848 by John Humphrey Noyes in New York, was a community that was well known for its sexual freedom. The founding of Oneida was influenced by the Second Great Awakening, a religious revival that occurred in America during the 1790s. One of its principles was perfectionism, the quest of an individual to rid themselves of sin and become as close to God as possible. A concept associated with this was the search for a soulmate to satisfy the sexual bond between the two sexes. Noyes condemned marriage for forcing a person to stay attached to one person. As a result, he formed a community in which there were more sexual options, hence the term free love community. Inhabitants of Oneida practiced complex marriage, where each adult male and female was married to every citizen of the opposite sex in the community. Because of this, the citizens were encouraged to have an open sexual relationship with each of their spouses. Children were raised by the whole community, not just one set of guardians. The Oneida community was relatively successful, being based on the production of steel animal traps in the community. Over time, Oneida broke down because of negative public opinion towards it, and it ended when it was reorganized into a corporation in 1881. Despite breaking apart, the Oneida movement served as a model for future sexuality-based movements such as the hippies in the 1960s. I'm from the Oneida community. We love sex! We are Fruit Ninja. We think sex bad. Do not do, not do, do sex! sex.
come at me, bro. Remember, kids, don't do sex! In 1825, Robert Owen began the New Harmony Community in Indiana. Owen was inspired by the original Shakers that had left Manchester for the United States a little after 1804. In studying the Shakers' success, Owen became convinced that a communal utopia was actually possible. Owen became convinced that the United States provided the perfect setting for his utopian experiments, so he came to the United States in November of 1824 to institute his ideas of a utopian society. New Harmony brought equality for all its people, male or female. This manifestation of equality promoted the responsibility of each citizen to contribute to the labor force. In order to provide motivation for workers in this system, Owen instituted a system of time money and time stores. New Harmony currency was worth the amount of time a worker had labored, and it could be exchanged for commodities worth the equivalent amount of labor. Although Owen provided New Harmony with everything he thought that it would need to succeed, it was missing the essential component that made other communities cohesive, religion. Because they lacked a strong central belief which served to unite other utopian groups, the members of New Harmony were lacking the commitment to create the society that Owen had envisioned. Finish him. Action. Gatsby, save me from the evil Super Saiyan. We must hold this community together. You're not getting away from me. But, but why? Because I won't let you get away. But why? Because disunity is tearing this community apart. But why? Because it is. But why? Because shut up! <laughs> I'm dead. Well, you see, the Shakers were a small but prominent community founded in England in the early 1770s by Anne Lee, who, after several unsuccessful pregnancies, decided that sex was the root of all sin. Inhabitants of this group disapproved of inequality in society, believing that women should be equal to men in all circumstances. The group migrated to America in 1774 due to criticism in Europe. They settled in New York and lived communally and abstained from marriage and sexual relations. Oh, no. Oh. The Shakers also developed a unique and unusually successful community. Shaker communities consist of extended families of men, women, and children who lived together in large houses that were divided into male and female living quarters. Men and women worked and ate separately, and all goods and chores were shared equally. Shaker villages became widely known for their industry and inventiveness, and simple, elegant furniture based on Shaker designs is still seen today. The Shakers also made advances in herbal medicine, invented many common items, such as the clothespin and the flat broom, and were the first to develop an extensive business selling packaged seeds. After 1850, however, Shaker membership in general began to decline rapidly. Nonetheless, on the whole, the group was remarkable in its longevity and stands as one of the nation's most successful communities. A small group of Shakers still exist today in Seventh Day Lake, Maine.